Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Chaos and I've lost 40 pounds on a plant-based diet after struggling with my weight for close to a decade. And I wanna share with you how I did that and how my eating has changed over the past couple of years that I've been maintaining this weight. And I've had a few people ask me recently how my eating has changed over the, those four years. I'll post something like I'm eating oat yogurt or I've got some more calorie dense foods in my diet. And people are always like, like, what are you eating? Like, did you eat this during the weight loss phase? So I thought, why not do a video showing how I've eaten and how that's changed throughout my entire weight loss journey, starting from when I very first started, which was in April, 2018. So 2018, I was at my heaviest weight that I'd ever been. It was about three months after my daughter Morgan was born. And I had been eating a lot of junk food throughout my pregnancy. I'd gained a lot of weight. And I was just feeling, I was feeling terrible my body. I was feeling trapped. I was feeling embarrassed, ashamed. And everything I'd done up until that point was raw diets or very extreme kind of raw to four, lots of salads, smoothies, juices, cold foods. And that's the only way that I'd really been able to lose weight in the past. And so at that time it was, it was coming into winter uh, and I was like, I can't, I didn't feel like I could face something like that again. It felt like it was too hard. The main reason I didn't feel like I could face drinking cold smoothies at night with a newborn over winter. So I was like, I have to do something different. And I stumbled onto something called the Potato Reset and I found Chef AJ who talks all about calorie density. And I thought, I've got to give this thing a really good go. So I committed to doing the Potato Reset which I've talked about lots and I'm going to put a video up here where you can go and watch that next if you want to. I'd committed to that for a month. And so this is what I looked like when I started the, the potato reset. And I found this old footage the other day and this was me eating some kind of soup or stew that I'd made when I was on the potato reset for that first month. And I did not want to be on camera. You can probably tell I was embarrassed. I really did not feel good about myself at that point. But I started to eat, over that course of that month, I just ate potatoes and non-starchy vegetables. Like that was it, because those are the potato reset guidelines. And the main reason I did this was that I didn't trust that something more moderate was going to work for me. I was convinced my body was broken, and I thought if it doesn't feel hard and extreme, then it won't work for me. So I'd cook up these big batches of potatoes and I would eat that with a side of vegetables. I remember eating a lot of mushrooms and tomatoes. I cooked up with some baby spinach and I would have that most of the day. Uh, or I would have something like a soup that I would add potatoes again and leeks to. A lot of soups, a lot of potatoes with some kind of side. And that was my diet. And I, I did that for an entire month. And I was also eating sweet potatoes as well, which I love. But over the course of that month, I lost about eight pounds, which was the quickest that I'd ever lost weight in my life. So I entered looking like this, and at the end, I was down eight pounds, and, and this was my after photo. And the reason that I lost weight was because I effortlessly got into a calorie deficit. I lowered the calorie density of my meals. I upped my veggies, which lowered the calories more. And I was eating very filling foods like potatoes, which helped me to stay consistent over that month. Bear in mind, I was also extremely committed because I was extremely desperate to lose weight. And as someone who thought that my body was broken, it had changed my entire perspective on potatoes and my fear foods because I'd been losing weight on them for an entire month. The biggest piece was realizing that I had to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight and that these foods, even though I'd been scared of them, potatoes, were actually really low in calories and I could eat a lot of them and feel really full, which I'd, I'd never felt that before. I'd never been able to feel full long term, like hours on a diet ever before. So for that first month, I wasn't eating avocado or nuts and seeds or tahini. I wasn't eating any processed food. I also wasn't eating any legumes or any kind of rice. It was literally non-starchy vegetables and potatoes. I wasn't even eating fruit. So in May 2018, when I finished the potato reset, I started adding in more low calorie dense foods. And I found after a month of not having fruit, it was like the holy grail of goodness to me. And I just, I loved it so much. So I would make these big 
plates for my breakfast which would be tons of cut up fruits like apples and pears and persimmons and I think we had feijoas at the time which if you haven't tried are flippin amazing and something that we get here in New Zealand so I'm sorry if you've never had them. I also started adding in beans and rice and small amounts of overt fats, like really, really small amounts at that time. And I wasn't really eating any processed food. So from May to November, I was pretty much eating whole foods, tons of potatoes still, a lot of non-starchy vegetables. My whole mindset around it had shifted, whereas before they were just a side, now it was all my meals were being built around how many vegetables I could fit into my cooking and on my plate. So this photo was taken in November 2019, seven months after I'd started the potato reset. And I'm not exactly sure how much weight I'd lost at this point, but it was pretty consistently uh, between two to four pounds a month after that initial eight pound weight loss that I'd had in uh, during the potato reset. So for that year afterwards, it was pretty much me eating entirely whole foods. Like I would occasionally splash out and eat like a burger or chips or something like that outside of the home, but it was, it was incredibly rare. Like I was pretty consistent over that year and I lost the majority of the weight over that first year. This is some of the meals that I was eating at the time. I went and had a look down memory lane. So this was March, 2018. Uh, lots of veggies in this meal. I had some kale, some lettuce, cooked up, like I would cook up these big sheets of non-starchy vegetables like carrots, um, what even else are some non-starchy vegetables? I, I would put like sweet potato and kuma in there which are not and then I would have those. So one of the things that I noticed when I did the potato reset was that I got really full on potatoes and I would stay satisfied for hours. I don't find the same for rice or even legumes. So I like adding them to my meals, but I'll still try and have potatoes in there. So you can see in this meal, I've got sweet potatoes, which kind of, you can see them there when I zoom in on it. But there's also rice in there because I know the potatoes are going to keep me more full. This was a meal that I loved making. Like I love soups. I made a ton of soups. And then I was also having them with these little purple uh, potatoes as well, which were really nice. Like I would use potatoes as dippers instead of bread. And then I was also making things like these muffins. Actually, Nick, would, Nick went through a stage of making oat muffins, like blending up oats with bananas. They would have all natural sweeteners in them. I'll, I'll try and find a recipe. Uh, I, I remember blending up dates for these muffins that I would make. So that was what would satisfy the sweetness for me is I would make things like this. These ones actually had apple in them. And so I would be occasionally eating those as well instead of eating processed food. I really enjoyed how I was eating over this time. And this is another really good example of the kind of foods that I would eat. Lots of sweet potato in there, as you can see, tons of non-starchy vegetables. I've got my grated carrot, there's some raw beetroot in there, which is not a non-starchy vegetable, I don't think. Um, but raw, you're getting in a ton of bulk. Tomatoes, there's lots of lettuce in there as well. And then some kind of dressing, but it would have been very watered down. So it would have been some kind of tahini with like a lot of water in there and lemon and salt and pepper so that it was creamy, but it wasn't um, adding tons of calories. When is this? So that is from March 2000. And 19 another example big bowls like this like I bought some huge salad bowls to accommodate my new eating and you can see tons of pumpkin in there because pumpkin is really low in calorie density I found out a little bit of rice a little bit of brown rice tons of salad and a little bit of hummus um, and I would have put salt and pepper on this as well so I, I loved eating this way at that point same kind of meal like tons of component bowls this is how and this is how I mostly lost all the weight, was eating foods like this. Lots of salads, lots of component bowls, pretty much potato in all my meals. Some kind of sauce of like a pulse, like this is black beans, I think. Um, or hummus, something that I could like mix through and would give me flavour. And then like lemon juice and salt and pepper and herbs and stuff in there as well. So this is a picture of me in April 2019 a full year after I had started trying to lose weight. So there's another picture, another picture. And at this point, 
I had just started working out like I'd done a little bit before then but I was consistently going to the gym I was like trying to build some lean muscle and at the moment I'm trying to build my shoulders um, and so I was starting to see not only I not only was seeing like the changes that I had happened in my body in terms of the weight loss I was now getting stronger as well which was extremely motivating and this is a picture that my or video that my mum took and I was like look how I can do pull-ups now so I was showing her at the playground like I I'd always had this goal to be able to do a pull-up and then like I could finally do it which is really really cool so that's August 2018 so at this point I was probably the leanest that I'd ever been and one of the contributing factors was that I started working at a cafe in I'm pretty sure it was July and I just I couldn't eat as much and I couldn't eat as regularly as I normally had and I was also moving a ton more so my calories lowered slightly again I lost like a little bit more weight like I lost like a couple of kilos and I was also like working out and trying to get stronger and that kind of contributed in me being like kind of losing what had felt like quite a big plateau for probably like four months ish at that point but in terms of my day-to-day -day eating not all that much had changed like what I was eating hadn't really changed at all it was just that I was working in a cafe and I couldn't really have as much access to eating all the time which you do when you're at home so in November 2019 about a year and a half after I'd lost all of that weight I started talking about weight loss online and I wanted to show you this very awkward first video that I took for Instagram so awkward so I knew I wanted to talk about weight loss. I knew that I wanted to help women experience the same kind of freedom that I had. But I had this idea that I wasn't lean enough or toned enough to be taken seriously. Which is kind of silly when I think about it. Because I'd lost so much weight at that point and I felt amazing. But I also wanted to experience what it would feel like to be coached by someone because that's what I wanted to do. And I felt like I didn't have... I didn't know what it was like to be have a coach and I wanted to get a coach to experience that so I decided to hire a macro coach to see what it would be like and that helped me get I would say like a couple of kilos lighter and look more toned because I was eating less carbohydrates than I ever had before so at that point my diet kind of changed again and I was pretty, like I was, I was still using calorie density, I was still understanding those concepts. But here's an example of a meal that I would make from December 2019. So you can see there's lots of low calorie non-starchy veggies in there, like a 50-50 plate. A little bit of potato and corn, but then a lot more tofu because I was trying to up my protein intake because I had macros to hit. The, the thing that I really like about doing this and that I don't regret it in any way is I, I had to put everything into a calorie counter to see how many calories it was. I really even grasped calorie density more. I started to be able to design bowls like this, which were about 500 calories uh, or even less, like 450 calories. They were still really filling just by playing Tetris, essentially, with calorie density and so in this meal I've got again like lots of low calorie vegetables they were like my saving grace at that time and they have been the entire time I've got tomatoes and uh, zucchini I've got a little bit of rice in there but again like I feel like I get more full on potatoes so I've got potatoes in there and then that thing there that's mayonnaise looking stuff was a tofu mayonnaise and so this really helped me when I was creating content to be able to show the difference between a like slight tweaks that you could make to your meals that would optimize them for weight loss by adding a ton more vegetables. So you can see this meal here, typical healthy vegan meal, 750 calories versus this meal, which was only 500 calories. So that did give me a good opportunity to create that kind of content at the time. I was still eating like lots of fruit. I was taking that with me when I went still eating lots of sweet potato i pretty much always bring sweet potato with me or some kind of potato as to snack on these are like twice baked sweet potato that i've shown before 
these are all the kind of things that I was eating but you can see in this photo like I look really lean and a lot of that like I'm not much heavier now I'm about two kilos heavier than I was at this date but I have more glycogen stores so it makes me look it doesn't make me look quite as lean and then I was I, I, well, I just have like slightly more fat now which is a choice so that's okay um, but I wasn't I was also moving a whole lot more at this point when because I was still working but I was eating tons more tofu I still eat lots of tofu to this day I eat it every couple of days um, and then like meals like this you can see lots of non-starchy vegetables a little bit of rice to help me to lower the calorie density yeah you can see meals like this same kind of thing and then also I would be eating more non-starchy vegetables and more kind of in-between starches like pumpkin uh, which is lower in calorie density but more filling but then more tofu, more edamame, more green beans because they're high, slightly higher in protein. So it was really trying to up my protein and lower my carbohydrates which would not recommend it. So this is a clip from February 2020. <laughs> So you can see at that time I was really lean and I was eating like very intentionally using calorie density. Um, meals like this, like I said, lots more pumpkin, lots more non-starchy vegetables. Even if I was eating noodles, be tons of non-starchy vegetables. Um, like still lots of soups in there. I think that's like a pumpkin-y soup. And no sweeteners on my porridge. Like I would have low calorie dense fruit. And I would, not, I would not have sweeteners. That's been most of the time. Like, to be honest, like, most of my weight loss, I have not had sweeteners on, like, oats or anything like that. I don't, I don't put, like, maple syrup or, or anything. Lots of broccoli. <laughs> Lots of soups. Big component bowl again, as you can see. Lots of sweet potato in there and non-starchy veg. Some fried rice. Lots of non-starchy veg. Yeah, like as you can see, like there's not a there's not tons and tons of starches in there, like especially that meal. But there is some pumpkin, which was what would be helping me keep me full at that time. But I definitely wasn't as satisfied as I am now. Like it wasn't something that I felt like I could do for the long term. This this is from June 2020, and I was showing on Instagram how I do like a 50/50 plate or eat pasta and still maintain my weight loss. So I was showing, okay, I put a little tiny bit of pasta. And then I put a ton of vegetables, which also has the sweet potato grated into that. Because remember what I said, potato helps me stay full for longer. So I normally add it to everything. Pasta doesn't, rice doesn't. Um, and then also a side of vegetables. So that becomes a very, very filling meal. But there's not like that much pasta in there. So it's a very much a, uh, a weight loss optimized meal. So that was June 2022. And I've, I pretty much have eaten the same way. Although I gained a little bit of weight once I stopped the macro counting. And once I stopped working full time because I was moving a whole lot less, therefore my calorie burn went down, and I was also eating more because I wasn't counting macros anymore, which culminated in me gaining a couple of kilos and have gaining a ton of flexibility, which I'm stoked about. So all in all from this point, not really much has changed. I've had little stints where I've done potato resets again to get my habits back on track, or I've done stints where I've been very, very consistent and I haven't, um, eating any processed food but overall my diet looks pretty similar to how it has the entire time that I've been losing weight with a little bit more flexibility mostly because I now trust the process and I know that I'm not going to gain weight if I go out and have a burger one night a vegan burger so you'll see me eating my same kind of oats for breakfast I put a little bit of oat yogurt in there which becomes the sweetener i love cherries which are low calorie dense fruit i love apples in there to bulk it up i love eating big bowls of potatoes with broccoli and edamame and bits of avocado i eat a little bit more fat now than i did at the start of my weight loss just because 
I've realized that I can like that's the only reason I don't fear it anymore and I've, I've really understood now that losing weight is all about getting into a calorie deficit and that's mostly about reducing the overall calories in your day-to-day -day meals through adding more veggies and getting rid of the processed foods like oils uh, ice cream chips all of that kind of stuff bread crackers and then getting consistent so I'm not eating cake and ice cream every night I love eating soups and stews and risottos and all the kind of foods that I've shared with you on my YouTube channel these are the foods that I eat day in day out and then once once or twice a week probably more like three times a week I will have something like a little piece of cake or a little bit of ice cream or a scone if my mum comes over and makes it and I also drink coffee every day which has oat milk in it but overall my diet is so similar because I learned the concepts that have helped me to lose and now maintain the biggest thing was to be adding a ton of veggies to my meal and I still do that there are times that I won't add as many sides of veggies and that's when I really notice that I get leaner is when I'm very intentional about adding a side of veggies or snacking on veggies but whether I do that or not I'm always adding a ton of vegetables to my recipes at least 50% and that's been the key reason that I've been able to lose and then maintain because how I cooked changed my diet is also still very focused around sweet potato and potato. It's probably my main source of calories. It's the thing that I cook up every couple of days. I'm eating potatoes every single day and I love them because they keep me super satisfied for very little calories. Potatoes are only 400 calories per pound. You can really eat a lot of them without overeating. And they've got a very high satiety index which means that they keep you full and they stop your cravings so you almost can't overeat on them and as you've seen i've made slight tweaks at times to try and get a little bit leaner all that was was increasing my vegetables consumption slightly decreasing the amount of starch that i was eating and upping my overall consistency it's just getting more into a calorie deficit like that's literally what tweaking is but don't even go there if you haven't got the basics sorted. One other big change is that I do feel like I have a lot more flexibility. Like I was saying, because I trust the process, I know that if I gain a little bit of weight, I can always bring my habits back in check. And I'm no longer scared of weight gain. I'm no longer scared that I'm going to regress to how I was because I've maintained this now for coming up four years like that's like a long time one other change that I do want to mention is that my appetite has gotten a lot less over the course of those four years and my mum was telling me like I, this is purely anecdotal but she was telling me that a lot of people have found that their appetite has reduced since having COVID I don't know like I my appetite is definitely less than it used to be and so I honor that now I don't feel like I have to be super stuffed I actually don't like that feeling anymore and I'm I'm very much in tune with my hunger but it took those four years or it took at least three years for me to get there um, because I was recovering from like a lot of restriction that I had in my early 20s it's not something that if I forced it's not something that I made happen I just found that my appetite got less over time and might partly be because if I just simply need less calories at a smaller size than what I used to. I hope that you found this video illuminating. If you take anything away from it, it's add a ton of veggies to your meals, eat a lot of potatoes, and know that if you're gonna lose weight, you must get into a calorie deficit, and you've gotta be consistent. If you don't know how to get started, then I have the perfect Kickstarter course for you six days and you will learn more about weight loss than 99% of the planet and know how to get into that weight loss zone it's a free mini course and you can find all the details in the description see you next week bye if you want to know more about the potato reset and my experience on that then watch this video next